Hi everyone. In today's quick tip, we're going to have a look at how to update your toolware using probing and Fusion 360. So before we get into it, what is toolware? Well, as we use tools, they wear in, in two ways normally. The first one is the physical size of the tool wears and gets smaller. The next one is as the tool wears, the cutting edge becomes blunt, it then becomes less efficient at cutting the material and you get more deflection. This is where the tool is pushing away as it's cutting. This is reducing the effective size of the tool rather than the actual size of the tool. But they're both compensated for tool wear. Thankfully, machines have a really good tool called cutter compensation and this is used to counteract this wear. Let's have a quick look at the controller, see where these values live and what they look like. So, on our controller, we have a tool table. This is a list of all the tools and their geometry. So what we've got here is we've got the length of the tool and then the wear of that length. So if the length is slightly longer or shorter than the nominal length of our tool. The same with geometry. We've got the diameter and then the wear. So this is the nominal diameter of the tool. So for a six millimeter end mill, that would be six millimeters. And then we've got the wear as well. So any minor adjustments that are occurring on that tool. Now there are two ways of doing this. One is to have the geometry stay as 10 and put the wear in the wear column. And then the other method is to actually update the geometry value itself. So it would either become 10.05 or 9.95 if you were to add or minus a value from there. That's two ways of using cutter compensation. So now we know what the machine's doing, let's have a quick jump into Fusion 360 and see how we actually program this. Here we can see our Fusion project with all of our toolpaths in. Now this is a one-off part so I need to make sure I get it correct first time. You can see here that I've split up my semi-finishing and finishing pass into two operations and I'm going to put a toolware update in between the two of these. If we take a look at our semi-finishing, we'll see that our cutter compensation type is set to in control. And for added accuracy, I've also made sure that my finishing step over is the same as my stock to leave. This will make sure that our deflection is representative of the finishing cut. Let's head over to the inspection tab, create a probe geometry item and select that top bore. I'm now going to enable the out of position and wrong size actions that will cause alarms on the machine if they're out of tolerance and then update the toolware. We need to select a reference operation. This is normally the machining operation that has just machined that feature. It's going to get the tool number, stock to leave and some other important information from that reference. Next, I'm going to set the minimum update threshold. This is a brilliant function that stops the toolware being updated on the controller for every micron of deviation found. As a rule of thumb, I normally use about 10% of my tolerance here. And finally, print results is going to enable me to import the results back into Fusion for a graphical representation. Let's drag that to just underneath the semi-finishing pass and let's do exactly the same again, but this time we're going to use a different strategy and update the length. Let's dynamically move the arrow to where we would like it to take the point and again select the actions and our reference operation as before. What we can see here now is two operations being used, one to update the tool's radius using a bore measurement cycle and the other to update the length using a single surface measurement cycle. As we said before, this is a one-off part, so I'm going to do a final check here. I'm not going to update the toolware, but I'm just going to do the outer position and the wrong size check to make sure that everything has been done correctly. So we've got our semi-finishing pass here now. This is going to give us our baseline where we're going to update from. We're going to probe the radius and the length, update the toolware, and then do our finishing passes. And finally, a check to make sure that everything is correct. So let's head over to our machine tool and see what this actually looks like in action. 
we're now going to probe that top bore. So we can see here the wear value that is already in our tool table of 0.142 is going to be updated to 0.102 after that probing cycle has finished. Let's finish off our part and hopefully everything's worked correctly. So for my one-off production part, I had that top semi-finishing pass that was going to give me the baseline where I would update from. I then probed the radius and the length. Once these updates happen, I finish off all my machining passes and then do a final inspection on my part to make sure it's been made to specifications. For repeat production, I'm going to combine the semi-finishing and finishing pass before into one finishing pass now. I'm then going to do the finishing machining operations and then finally at the end I'm going to probe our part in both length and radius. I'm going to see if the tool wear needs any fine tuning but also I'm going to do a check to make sure that our part is still correct to specification. So I like to think of this as improving the quality of the next component while still ensuring this component is correct to specifications. I hope you found this quick tip useful and I'll see you all again next time.